Now, let's talk about the number one comedy trending on Netflix right now. It's a show called Tires, created by the great Shane Gillis. Tires is a show focusing on Will, who's portrayed by somebody named Steve Gerben, who has inherited his family's tr- struggling auto repair chain, the Valley Forge Automotive Center. As he is trying to actually build a business, there is Shane, his cousin, who constantly undermines him and gets him in wacky situations. And I don't know about you guys, but Tires on Netflix is such an awesome six episode um, first season. Tires is such an awesome show. It's chill. It's laid back. There's some legit stakes involved. There's legit wholesome moments and just laugh out loud funny things now this show isn't deep it's not going to win emmys it's not going to win a peabody award it's just a nice chill low budget 22 minute episode 22 minutes per episode comedy where you just watch guys chilling at an auto body shop (laughs) it's simple as that tires i just love this show and um, I will say, I don't like some of the, what the critics are saying. And this is where, um, you know, some people clearly are taking it too seriously. The show's called Tires, if anything. <laughs> but, I mean, I'll save that for later. But what do you guys think of Tires on Netflix? Uh, I want to start with Car on this, actually. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it, it like I, I talked to you earlier, I think it just kind of feels like the office, lower budget office. With uh, like some less character building, but I mean, me and my boyfriend just watched it like before I came on here, and uh, we were doing like a little task with our hands, building a keyboard, and it was nice because we didn't have to look at the screen to get what was going on, but we could still enjoy ourselves. So I mean, I liked it. It's it's not something that yeah, like you said, it's not going to get Emmys, it's not going to win awards or anything. I don't think it's trying to be deep. It's not trying to like really say anything. It's just there to be entertaining. I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I really liked it, and I didn't think I was going to. I thought I was going to have the exact opposite, uh, exact opposite reaction than from what I had. Um, I don't. I mean, I I like Shane Gillis fine. We've talked about him on this show, right? But I, I'm not like a huge fan of his. Um, but I think that the critics that Matt was talking about, like. I do think they're kind of miss. They're missing a couple of points, which is not uncommon for. Can I read? Are they, are they the, like, can I read the? Uh, can sure, I just read the consensus around it? Yeah. So we've got a fifty. This yeah, I saw terrible. that. I saw it like on IMDb and Google. Like most people like it, and then I saw that on Rotten Tomatoes, and I was like, "Huh." But this I, is where. Yeah. So I go, do agree with our tomatoes most of the time. This I don't. So at fifty, with a ninety-two percent audience approval rating by the way it says the consensus tires get some chuckles by kicking around shane gillis's self-aware persona but this unambitious sitcom will need to rev up the inspiration to get real traction and i just i don't know who did this some some annoying prick to quite frankly like it's not it's 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 20 minutes pretty much of them acting like fools and it's it, let me tell you something. It got renewed for a second season two days before season one actually yeah, dropped. Before it even came out. And if you actually really watch the show and take your bias away from it, it's there. Like I said, there are legit stakes in it. Um, is it world renowned, like anxiety inducing stakes? No, but one where narrative makes sense, and it's it's just funny, and it's. I, these guys would work like that. And if you, you know, my car has been in and out of auto body shops for the past few years, and I somewhat get the culture there. And it's just, you know, people work on your cars. Like, what, what do you tell you? Now, you know, do, you don't have to lose sleep over the critical consensus either, but like, chill out sometimes, my, my friends. It kind of feels like it could. Um... What's a good way to say it? It's like how in the office, um, in the first season, I, I want to say, I don't think it was as good as others because the character building played an important part. And I kind of see the potential for that here. Like if they're having more seasons and they actually build on the characters and their backgrounds and they get us to actually give a little bit of a shit about them. I think that a lot of the humor is going to land a lot better as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, so I agree with Matt that if they wanted to just be like a weird, I say weird, weird is not the right word, but if they wanted to just be Shane Gill's stand up, but 
in a sitcom, which by the way, most of the great comedian like comedians from like when we were kids did this. They did they had a they had some sort of like, you know, um sitcom that was just their comedy, but written out with a cast, uh essentially. And that's what this is at the moment, right? Um, but I actually agree with with that take, Kara, and and I can almost see part of the criticism. I just don't think it's it's fair or warranted after six episodes that this actually, in my opinion, could be a very good show. Uh, I know yeah. we're like we're we're talking no Emmys, no Peabody's, and that's all probably still true. But like, I there's do think potential. that right, like <laughs> the the there's clearly in the relationship between Will, who is uh, the the main character, <laughs> he essentially. Me up. And Shane, uh, played by, gotta... by Shane. yeah, yeah, Shane played by you know Gillis is um is like it's kind of it's there like and even in just six episodes you you understand I mean you understand by episode two that as much as they annoy each other they have each other's back and they yeah. do try and help one another um so like that part's there they have to figure out everybody else like the rest of the character although I, I would say Stavros's character I want to say Dave. <laughs> um is also i thought kind of good like you could tell that he he's only marginally more competent than will is frankly but he lords that margin that marginal uh improvement over you know over his subordinate you know because it's the only thing he's he's got uh what well, was in the second episode uh he's telling his friend shane is that uh I'm light spoilers don't worry too much about it he's talking to a friend about a person who just died um, and the friend's critiquing his job, and he says he died like a real man doing something you hate for <laughs> what's well, every day for the rest of your life, and then you die underneath a car. I think a lot of guys can relate to that. Like a lot of guys can relate to that, and not just auto guys, like me, like office guys too, accountants, anyone. Like there's just kind of this culture around that, a guy culture, and we don't talk about it that much. Uh, outside of our, you know, our therapy sessions that we don't tell anyone that we take because of guy culture. So I think that there's something there. If if Shane Gills wants to make this something else, now that Netflix seems to be on board and is going to throw some money at it, I think this could be office adjacent. Um, but at the moment, I think it's actually more of a low budget Seinfeld. It's not about anything in particular. I know you said there's stakes. I'm like, that's I'll say that's generous. The idea that but there's like, stakes is generous. But, but what I mean is by stakes is in terms of the show, the show about nothing. I'd have to really think about that. But I mean, this will be a spoiler show, a spoiler segment, you know, with the shop closing and figuring out how right. to do it. I didn't see it didn't automatically feel like, oh, they just throw this away. Something clever has to happen. And from the good writing, it did. So yeah. that's what I meant by the stakes. Yeah, they they do have a there. There's a theory. Like it, keep, it keeps you something. engaged, right? That's the even thing. from the beginning. They're trying to increase sales at the shop. Yeah. So as you go through and see how how that doesn't work over and over and over again, when you get to the point where they're like, all right, the shop's got to go. Like, uh, you Belmont. know what I mean? Like, right? Exactly. <laughs> you you can understand what's happening, like because from the beginning it's been clear that there's a problem. So yes, there are stakes. In that there's a a point. (laughs) Yeah, everything that happens is somewhat connected in some way to them trying to increase sales. So I guess that's something. But the the initiative, you know, we make women feel good, feel comfortable here. While you'll go, girl, (laughs) dude. Yeah, (laughs) you'll go, girl. Was actually quite funny. Dude, oh my god! And then the car wash—they end up doing a bikini car wash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or when you go to—did we just see this guy put women in a transfer? What's it in a in a uh, like in a tra- in a trailer? <laughs> or bro coming into work just smelling like puss for a whole day? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Listen, well, got Steve. His name is Steve Gerben, who plays well. He cracks me up the whole time. Just his, he makes the most of his screen presence, and you know, shouts to Shane Gillis for creating a show where you're really the second, and he's the star of the show. Well, yeah. What's crazy is he did again. I was talking about how all of these like comedians have this show, yeah. sort of. 
like everybody loves Raymond, right? You look at that as an example. You um you have uh what the Bill Ingvall show, things like that. Um George Lopez's show. Seinfeld, like you just said. Seinfeld, yeah. But they always play like the comedian always plays the straight in these situations. Yeah. I.e. they're they're not the funny person. Uh, I guess Seinfeld's kind of interested. I know I, I would say Seinfeld is still playing the straight role. So the idea that Shane Gillis did this and is very clearly not playing the straight role. That's absolutely <laughs> not his role. He's one of the many distractions, one of the many pieces of comedy that the straight man in the show has to deal with. Steve, you said Gerben is his last name? Yeah. Yeah, so it is interesting. that That's different. Like, usually when you write a comedy show based on your stand-up, you are the straight man who's observing the chaos around you. But... Shane Gillis made himself the chaos mm -hmm. uh, and gave himself a different straight man to observe it. Um, and I actually, I liked that part of it because I often find myself in my real life, again, talking about you know, the guy aspect of all this and the very bro aspect of Shane Gillis and all his friends, which I don't love all the time. But I find myself often like Steve Gerben's character, uh -huh. not quite as, you know, well inept. Right. But I do I do see some will in me as the guy who's not we, we've talked about this. Me and Matt have about me not being a bro at all. Um, it's just not in my nature. And so but I have friends who are. And so I, I've actually felt that situation where I'm playing the straight man in a like surrounded by a room of bros. Um and so I kind of could I kind of could vibe with that, which I thought which made it funnier for me, which is why I think I liked it way more than I thought I would <laughs> and why I like it way more than like just a straight up Shane Gillis comedy special um, personally, because I could see like and I think Shane Gillis knows that, too. And he knows that for his comedy specials as well. Like not everyone's a bro. Not even all guys are bros. And so you got to make fun of that, too. Like you can't just say the joke. You, you say the joke that would make all your bros laugh, but you also have to kind of make fun of the fact that that joke is making all of your bros laugh. And I feel like that's what makes like more offensive humor okay, too. Like you, you gotta, yeah. everything has to be on the chopping block or else. Well, it's like Larry <laughs> David. It's like Larry David. He could talk about anything he wanted because the whole point is that Larry David, in his case, it's that he is a, an ass. Like Larry, the whole point of Larry David is. Yeah, he says these things, but also he's an ass. Like, you don't like Larry David. For Shane Gillis, it's not quite the same, but the whole point is like, yeah, these jokes are kind of dumb and lowbrow, but that's because Shane Gillis portrays himself. I don't think it's true, but he portrays his character as dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. he is dumb. So, of course, the jokes are dumb. He's dumb. <laughs> and so, like, you can, you can laugh at the dumb joke or you can laugh at the dumb guy telling the dumb joke. Either way, you're laughing. And I think that's the point of the show. And but that's why having, again, Will on the show, I think, adds something that even his stand-up doesn't quite have for me, which is why I really mm -hmm. liked it. Yeah, when yeah. you uh, asked me to watch it, I was like, oh, there's got to be, like, some kind of controversy behind it. And I was watching it, and I was like, oh, no, are people, like, super offended by, like, the sexist jokes and stuff some like that? Some people are. But He's... I don't think it's bad, because, like, you're, yeah. not, you're not looking at the show, looking at his character and going, that guy, that's <laughs> a guy I want to be. I want to be just like that guy. Right. I mean, he actively, openly acknowledges that he's, and, like, the second episode is about how he's a, like... He's a nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's mm. not, the yeah. entire second episode is him trying to get more money. From the window uh, shopping, from, dude. From the window. <laughs> he, he looks out the windows after he hears off. He goes, I haven't even looked at, looked at these. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, um, no, I again, I really did like it. And as far as controversy goes, like, Gillis is like halfway associated with like Joe Rogan and like that whole crew, right? So Rogan there's always, Right. So there's always going to be a base level of people who find him offensive just for just for being there. Remember, he got fired from SNL before even getting. Yeah, up. yeah. But I think that he's gotten smarter. I mean, I think he threads that needle really well. Like he makes just enough people mad that the people who I personally dislike, the ones who only like things that make other people mad. We all know the type. There's a type of person who only enjoys content that makes. I don't. I won't get into too much politics, but if they don't even have any humor in them. It's right. Just, if it's just pisses if, off someone I don't like, then it. Then funny. I love it, and yeah. he has just enough that he can piss off enough people to make those people 
not care that he's kind of making fun of them too because it pissed them like he he's really made a really cool dynamic where he's got like just enough enemies that the people who only care about your enemies like him but it's not so like it's not so bad that the people who actually are like that many people actually care you know what i mean like it's mm-hmm. funny enough it is in the middle enough that most people are like yeah this is fine and it gets just a small group of people fired up on both ends and everybody else can just enjoy it, which I, I get. I kind of like. 